Oh, hello, hello, Facebook. And thank you so much for joining me. I would like to say to everyone, it's Friday night and happy Sabbath. As a family, when I was a little girl, we would all go out to my grandmother's house and she lived in Five Mile, people would call it back in the day here in Dallas, Texas. But my grandmother, my grandparents, they were spiritual people and they believed in putting their hands on people and praying and bringing in the Holy Spirit, especially into the home. So on Friday nights, now on Thursdays, we would gather together as a family and we would prepare for what we call the Sabbath. Saturday in my family is the Sabbath. Well, on Thursday, we would get everything that we were gonna cook on Friday for Saturday. We would make sure that our homes were extra clean because you never know who might be coming by for the weekend. And by noon on Friday, we were prepared for Sabbath. And that was our routine. What I want to do today is welcome everyone into my room so that we can hug up to a pillow of love and we can bounce up and down in the love of spirituality and God's goodness. Let me open with a word of prayer for everyone. Dear Most Heavenly Gracious Father, I'd like to thank you so much for coming into my life. I'd like to thank you for the fortitude that you give me. I'd like to thank you for the, the, the strength, the love that you give me, the, the forgiveness. Father, I'd like to thank you for the many, many blessings that you give me. Thank you for every obstacle, Father, because every obstacle that you see me through, hallelujah, I'm able to testify, not just on my behalf, but Lord, on what you have done for me and my family. So I wanna thank you, and I wanna let everyone know that God loves, that God loves you, and just like he blesses me, he will also bless you too. Amen. And let's get up, get into our worship. All right. Um, normally, we um, open up with um, singing a song, okay? I'm not the best singer in the world, but uh, I'm going to open up with a song. I'll read a scripture, and I'm going to tell a story. The harvest is plentiful. But the laborers are few. There are so many jobs in God's vineyards for all of us to do. We must witness to everyone we meet in every song we sing. We must tell the world of the soon, soon coming King. We must tell the world of God's goodness. All right, praise the Lord. Y'all, do y'all know that there is so much goodness to share in the world about our father in heaven the one who flung the sun up there the one who stepped and made crooks and valleys you know that god that's the god that that gives me fortitude that's the god that gives me forgiveness and love let me read this scripture before i get into the story <clears throat> god comforts his people Comfort my people, says your God. Comfort them. Speak tenderly to the people of Jerusalem. Announce to them that their hard labor has been completed. Tell them that their sins has been paid for. Tell them that their sins, did y'all hear that? That their sins have been, been paid for. And this is the thing, not just their sins way back in the day, 
but our sins presently now have been paid for. When our Father died on the cross for us, He did that so that we would have the opportunity at, at everlasting life. He's letting us know, listen, I'm going to sacrifice my blood, sweat, and tears, my bones. I'm going I'm to sacrifice these people nailing uh, 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 nails in my hands. I'm going to sacrifice these thorns around the crown of my head. I'm going to sacrifice that for you, my child, because I love you so much. I love you so much. And it also says, tell them the Lord has punished them enough for all their sins. Hmm, that's pretty deep. A messenger is calling out. A messenger is calling out. That was Isaiah 40, um, verse one through two. What I'd like to say to everyone is, I wanna share a story. I want to share a story about a family who had four children, beautiful children. Now, they didn't have much money, but what they did have was the talents of the Lord. Uh, the mom was a poet. Uh, the mother did hair. She was everything of earth of a woman goddess. And the father was everything of, of, of a strength of a god. But one day, one day their beautiful boy, their beautiful, simple boy met a girl. And you would say that simple life people met the upper crust, shall I say. And when the upper crust met, nobody knew that they would marry. Nobody knew that they would marry, but they did. And when they married, sin festered. Sin festered like never before. Every sinful, egregious thing that you could think of beseeched their marriage. Theft. hideous things. I, 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 I hate to even say it, but theft, child pornography, uh, polyamory, all of these things festered in their marriage. Now, the simple boy that's now turned into a man, he was baffled at what was going on. What is going on here? Oh my gosh. But I'm, I'm, I'm on the upper crust. Uh, you know, I can't go back here. You know, what would my mom and them say? What would my parents say? Would they say I didn't appreciate this? Would they say that I wasn't good enough anyway? What would they say? Moreover, what would you do? I, I, I like to challenge myself daily to know that when I'm in a pressurous, diverse situation, I challenge myself to know that I can immediately turn to God within my wicked ways. But this simple boy did not, who is now turned into a man, did not have enough strength to fight or money to fight the upper crust. Now what was sad about this story is that this is actually some of our present day history and news. When this boy, who is now grown, experienced these egregious things with not only just an upper cruster, but a spiritual, quote unquote, upper crust conglomerate. Oh my gosh, I'm bewildered. How can, how, how can I fight that? How can I stand up against that? If you see something, you should say something. How, I, you know, what, what can I do? If you tarry, you'll get dirty. 
And what this young man did, he tarried amongst the sewage and literally got dirty. Now, sin is really tricky now. Sin will bless you. Sin will give you things that you never, ever imagined. But what sin will do, sin will give you such a reality that you will come face to face with choices. Or better yet, it will bring you to the reality of facing your choices. See, one thing about it and two things for sure, you may not know this, but our cellular cells structure, our cellular cells microbial structure is shaped in itty bitty crosses. So regardless of if we choose him, the facts of the matter is, is that the choice was there first. We're so intricately designed to be connected to God that, that we don't even recognize sometimes that he speaks to us first. He speaks to us first because we are His. And there is a demonic entity that's out here trying to take, grab, and redirect what is God's, what is destined for heaven. So when you recognize sin hovering around you, hovering over you, if you see something, you say something. God help me. God deliver me. Father God remove me. You remember back in the day when you were a kid and you'd go to Sunday school or Sabbath school and you'd hear the song? Um, Be careful little feet where you go. Be careful little feet where you go. Be careful little mouth what you say. Be careful little mouth what you say. Be careful little tall ears what you hear be careful little ears what you hear those things are real we're dealing with sin out here every day we have sinful things going on on social media murders um, all kind of stuff we have the worst things going on if you don't walk out your house with a sincere covering of protection and knowing that tarrying, tarrying in negative places will yield you a negative result. No matter how pure your heart is, no matter how good your intentions may be, no matter what efforts were seen and recognized and acknowledged, so that that young man, that's that boy that's now a, a grown man, tarried. And the upper crust is way down here saying, I see that you tarried. And the upper crust said, I don't want you no more. I'm done. Boom, boom. Locked behind bars. I don't want you to tell about my egregious stuff. I don't want you to tell about this. And the bars are shaking. I don't want anyone to know about this. And he's praying to the Lord, please deliver me, Lord. I see that this got on me and I done got dirty. I see that I see what I did wrong now, Lord. I'm 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 in jail holding prayer groups. I'm in jail counseling others and telling them of your goodness and your mercy and your forgiveness, Father. I'm in there telling them that you're gone to prepare a place for me. And when you go to prepare a place for, for us, you will come back again and receive us unto you, Lord. I'm telling them. I'm telling them of your goodness. But guess what? It was too late. It was too late. As of last Saturday, my client, Mr. Richard Brandon Coleman, was railroaded in the Ellis County Jail by the private investigator Bill and the court appointed attorney.
it breaks my heart to know that in 2023, we will allow a mom to lose her son. And we will allow egregious, hideous acts within a church conglomerate. And we as a society, as a city, we will support them. Hallelujah, Jesus. We will support them in their spiritual demise. You're going to keep going to that church? You're going to keep paying those tithes to what you see? This boy, who's now a man, tarried with what he thought was upper crust. But when we forget where we came from or where we come from, and we don't understand that when we are doing God's work, hallelujah, when we are doing God's work, we are under spiritual attack 24 hours a day. And that's why it is a mandate for these pastors and these deacons. If you're going to preach it and teach it, you got to walk it. If you're going to shepherd over a flock, make sure you take care of your home first. So that when you do step out in public, your children, your your entitled children, your upper crust children, your children who walk with a daily expectation, make sure you have instilled in them what it is, what it ain't, and what it's going to be spiritually. Or you'll have again an upper crust hideous spiritual situation and this boy that meets, this boy that's now a man, that meets this upper crust can't look back can't look back I got the hat I'm going to keep it even if it sacrifices me I have never in my life experienced or seen or heard of such hideous things and they not be exposed. I pray for each and every one that is currently involved in this. Because in the last days, the Bible tells us that Satan's mess will be revealed. One thing about it, you may be able to stop Mr. Cole, but what you cannot do is stop biblical promise. History that is foretold is inevitable. Facts are going to be seen and going to be heard. I'd like to thank everyone for having Friday night worship with me. It has been a pleasure. I don't see too many people in my life, but that's okay because God is still in the building. He's still blessing me, and he is still giving me a charge to help. Let's close out worship with um, this song. Listen, there used to be this show that came on. It was a children's show that came on every morning. And they used to sing this song called Bullfrogs and Butterflies. So I'm going to try to remember it. I don't know if I can, but I'm going to try to remember it. It's really cute. Then I'll have a word of prayer, and we'll close out, okay? Uh, the song used to go like this. Bullfrogs and butterflies. They both been, let me see. Bullfrogs and butterflies. They'll be born again. Bullfrogs and butterflies. They'll both be born again. And the significance of that song is we are birthed. But in Jesus Christ, we can be reborn. Mr. Coleman can be reborn. Uh, Mr. Coleman's ex-wife, Cora Jakes, can be reborn. Um, uh, you know, any sinner can be reborn. Let's have prayer. Dear Most Heavenly Gracious Father, 
I thank you so much for revelation, discovery, and facts. Lord, I'm 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 I, I, I'm hurt, but I'm still uh, uh, engaged in your work. I, I I today I felt a little weary. I shed a little tear yesterday. My head was hurting, but today. I can see the sunlight of the sky. I can smell the, the, the victory in the air. And I see the goodness of the Holy Spirit see. Lord, I want you to send your archangels to the Ellis County Jail. I want you to send your strongest angel to smite injustice. I want you to send your next strongest angel to hover around him and keep his keep Mr. Richard Brandon Coleman safe on his journey. And Father God, I want you to take your arms, Father, and blanket this mother and father's pain. Blanket this brother and sister's pain. And for those who have turned a blind eye, and for those who, who don't remember Mr. Brandon Coleman's laugh, who don't remember his touch, who don't remember his, 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 his soft voice and his words of encouragement and protection. Those of you, God help them. Forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. In the mighty name of Jesus, I thank everyone for being on this live with me. Thank you. Happy Sabbath. And be safe out there in them streets. I'm Dominique Morris with My Three Daughters Podcast. I'm also the advocate for Richard Brandon Coleman. All right, be safe and have a great one. Bye now.